Hi guys, are you here with another tooth for Blender hard surface modeling? Um, this series is gonna be all about hard ops, an amazing add-on for simplifying the workflow in Blender for reducing a lot of clicks into simple actions. So we're gonna go from the basic stuff to the most advanced stuff. So where can you get hard ops from? You can get it from Gumroad and Blender Market. Just go to Master Xeon 1001 uh, store front and just download it from there. If you don't have a box cutter, just grab a bundle and you're good to go. Now, where can you learn about box cutter, uh, about hard ops? Well, there is documentation here, Hobbs Docs. So if you click on that, you will be um, brought into a website that has a lot of content. Then another place would be to go to um, YouTube channel of Master Zeon 1001 and just uh, look for videos there. And also I'm going to be dropping some vids on the channel, um, the whole series. And basically my entire channel from now on is going to be about 3D and hard surface modeling. So if you enjoy my vids, you know where to find them. So how can you install hard ops? Well, it's really easy. Um, it's like just, you know, like any other add-on. Go to Edit Preferences. You click on install, install from the zip file, which you downloaded from um, from this website or another website when you bought it from. Um, then you check this box and save preferences and you're good to go. Now, before we move on, uh, I want to talk to you about these, uh, these add-ons here. So um, in this add-ons um, tab, you can see some recommendations and they're not random because these tools actually are integrated into hard ops and i'll show you how in a minute but i'll tell you which ones i use very quickly i use box, box cutter kid ops mira mesh machine uh, bezier mesh shaper and diggle machine i do not use snapping pies i think uh, machine tools is better it's also a free add-on has more functions and these two it's a personal preference really um batch ops is been taken over uh, by hard ops right now there is a new function called smart apply which does batch operations and the group pro well you know personal preference but these are recommendations for the hard surface modeling workflow so you know look into that if you're interested so you got the hard ops installed and um, let's talk about menus so the first menu of course is going to be the main menu here in this add-on uh, window right so you got all the shortcuts um, you can change colors of various things etc so you can access all the stuff in here but how about menus in blender itself well the main menu you will be accessing right is menu um, is a Q menu so you press Q and depending on which mode you're in so let's get out of this uh, look dev mode for a sec if i press on the cube and press q you can see that the menu looks like this now if i go to um, edit mode and press q my menu shifts to something like this however if i have nothing selected and press q right my menu looks completely different still so it really depends which um, which menu, uh, which mode you're in, but Q menu is going to be one of the main things that you're going to be accessing because that's where all the main tools and other menus, sub menus are located. Okay. Control tilde is another menu that is very useful, and control tilde is. Um, is a menu where all the modifiers are located, you have some interesting uh, options as well that we will talk about later on in upcoming videos but yeah the, you know it can be intimidating and sort of overwhelming at first but don't worry really it's a bit like operating a photographic camera if you know what i mean so you got this extensive menu but once you set it up uh, you just don't go back there anymore because things are being set and all you do is simply you know using the tool so yeah there is a lot of options but quite frankly I don't really go in here because there's no need so you know I stick to the main main areas which are the um, the center of the workflow so uh, let's talk about other menus well there's another one if you press N so on N panel you have a menu here for hard ups 
and incidentally it looks actually quite similar to what we had before so if i go control tilde you can see that control tilde menu looks very much like one of these uh, menus here on the uh, one of the tops here on the end panel menu these are some other settings this menu for example here is also interesting it's from the uh, Q menu uh, which can be accessed by um, clicking Q, uh, pressing Q when nothing is selected in the scene and if you go to settings here, hard ups learning, you can see it's exactly the same menu and that's actually a very cool place to visit because you have all the materials here for learning but also links to stuff like Facebook uh, page uh, group page and discord channel these two are very active um, um, groups there's a lot of people who you know help one another so if you have a question and don't know something about hard ups don't be shy just you know drop a question you're gonna get answered in, in minutes literally like almost instantly the um, other discord or, or facebook so master zeon is also very active on these forums so you know just drop a question there and someone for sure will help you. So that's yet another menu here. So by pressing N. Then one more menu is Alt V, but you can also access it by pressing Q and going to um, a viewport menu here. And you can see shortcut it's Alt V. Alt -V. So you could access this by uh, pressing Alt V. And it also works in... Uh, object mode another menu is um, shift Q shift Q is kind of like a speed dial menu if you know what I mean so like really quick and dirty access to the main functions I'll be honest I I don't use it quite often I'm just mainly in Q menu and a control tilde that is like 95% of the operation you can see um, hard ups icon here on the toolbar on the, um, on the T menu. So if you press T, this toolbar is gonna pop. And if you press Alt W, you can access box cutter if you have it, or hard ups directly, or flip between them. W will gonna you know get you out of the hard up zone. So Alt W to get in, W to get out. And if you are in hard ups menu, you can see that I have a new bar on top. Now, don't get, you know, hang up too much on this bar because it's more of a exercise field, if you know what I mean, like um, just for testing stuff and having fun with shapes and, and um, modifiers and whatnot. But um, it, it has a few interesting functions that I want to talk about, okay? So let me show you something cool. If I select this uh, object and go to operations and modifier scroll, you can see the modifier is stuck on the left side. Also, you can see the same thing in the main uh, blender on uh, the modifier stack menu. And there is an H menu in here, which is usually you can bring it up by pressing H. And the menu that's near the cursor, you can shift by tapping tilde. So it is toggle different modes. Anyway, if I start scrolling my mouse up, you can see that the modifier stack is going up and you can see that modifiers are being added to the scene one by one. So you can see which modifiers have created this object. More importantly, you can see which modifier affects what, like what's, what's happening once modifier has been activated. And this can be very helpful to determine issues in your mesh. You can also easily scroll modifiers in the stack, but we're going to talk about it in a different video. But this mesh, I mean this object is actually not mesh, it's just a single vert. So if I go back to, you know, to, 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 the, to the beginning, you can see it's just a single vert. That's been turned into plane then cube and then being sliced okay so that's what smart objects are about so if I create this uh, cube here if I do the same thing so go to modifier scroll you can see it's just a vert 
So if I go to edit mode, you can see it's just a really, really odd. Well, it's not really, well, kind of geometry, but it's just a mess, right? However, the cool thing about it is that you can actually cut it. So if I go to box cutter by pressing LW, I can start cutting at it. You know, you can start having fun with box cutter in here, right? And do all kinds of funny stuff. That's how I created this cube. But more, more than that, you can actually um, really, um, in a fun way, affect the shape of the, the object itself. So if I go to... Um, if I press control and hold it, right? So I go to hard ops. Hard ops needs to be selected for this function to work. So you see it will not work in in box cutter. It has to be in hard ops. You can see these dots. And these dots can be adjusted, um, the size of them and the size of the text. In this menu here, um, these two functions. You have different functions in here as well. You can play with them if you want to, but they all relate to this top bar. So I can adjust the bevel, right? I can adjust the second bevel or the third bevel. And this bevel is clumping, so let's uh, let's go to bevel modifier and which one is it? This one? Nope, the last one. Clump overlap. That's the one. Now it should be fine. It's clamping the bevel, which means we'll not overshoot the verge. You see, there's actually like a limiter on the bevel. So you can play with this. You can play with the solidify. So all I'm doing is pressing control and just clicking with the mouse and moving it or moving, you know, the screw modifier. And if you right click on it, you're going to get access to the modifier that, you know, the dot is assigned to. So for instance, this one will get me access to this bevel, you see. So I don't have to look for it in the whole entire stack of modifiers. Let's say like in this box, you know, when you have a lot of modifiers, you don't really want to look for stuff, right? So all I do is just press, right? And I can access all the modifiers and cutters. You see those blue dots? These are cutters, right? So it's really convenient and, and kind of fun way to, to work. Then again, once you're happy with your shape, what you can do is go to Q, Operations, and Smart Apply. Smart Apply will collapse all the modifiers in a stack. You see nine modifiers applied. Well, let's do it again. So I have all these modifiers here. It's going to apply, well, this box, right? Right, so let's just collapse them so you can see. Now if I click this and uh, press smart apply right it will collapse nine modifiers so if i open the stack now you see on the last bevel and weighted normals was um was not applied and that's how smart apply works it applies everything except the last bevel and weighted normals so now i can just you know i can either do it through the um editing through hard ups menu or through this menu in here because bevel is still we have still the smart bevel from this smart bar, right? Because if I, if I, for example, apply the normal bevel, right? So let's say I create a cube, okay? And apply a bevel to it, right? You see, I can press control, but no dots are popping up because this bevel was not a smart bevel. So it wasn't actually applied from, from this top menu. So you can collapse this object and you can now use it for editing because now it's actually a mesh, right? Because before we apply the modifiers, well, let's show it on this cube. It's not really a mesh, right? Now we need to apply modifiers to make it into, you know, to, to, to change it into a mesh, right? So that's how this, uh, this works. And then you have interesting shapes like, you know, screws and stuff you can, you know, have fun with it, right? But more importantly, um, that bar to the right side is much more interesting in my opinion, because this one gives you access to modifier. And maybe not a cube, let's grab a plane. It's gonna be easier to illustrate it on a plane. So let's grab a plane mesh. And let's say I'm gonna, for example, want to bevel the uh, this plane. So all I have to do is click on this 
um, here on this bevel. You see, if you hover over uh, over a function, if it offers you more options, it will actually show what you can do. And there's going to be a description, like a tooltip. So now if I press control, I can adjust these, um, these bevels. But if I wanted to adjust the number of segments, I have to press control, hold it, press shift, then click and move my mouse up and down. And I can adjust the number of segments. Then I can add, for example, solidify to it. And I can, you know, again, play with the solidify, add another bevel, right? And play with that bevel and this one. And then add third bevel. And, you know, you can just keep creating your own shapes. Other cool stuff that you can do with this uh, menu is, for example, let's apply subdivision to this by pressing Ctrl 3, change it to simple and apply. And now we have a subdivided mesh. If I press R90 and flip this and apply the rotation, okay, so Ctrl A and apply rotation, and I'm going to click on this, I'm going to go into the form. But since it's a smart modifier, I can hold Ctrl and actually move my mouse and deform it like this. It's a really cool way of working. And, you know, you can just keep adding to this shape. For example, we can uh, create an array on any axis with ease. Right? Or we can create a circular array. So what I did is just control clicked on this array because you see if I click on the object and hover over the array, I have different options, right? So the uh, control option so control click will array stuff around the cursor. So I arrayed it around the cursor. If I just clicked on the array, it would be a circular array. Well, I think that should cover the basic functions of uh, Hardops. Uh, so you know how to download it, you know how to install it. The installation, there's one more thing I want to tell you that Hardops is evolving very rapidly. So there's a lot of updates and they're coming quite fast. Blender is evolving too, so sometimes you might get some compatibility issues um, if you are uninstalling, reinstalling new versions of Hardops, for example, right? So occasionally, once in a month or two, you might want to purge your Blender, which I mean is uninstall Blender, and they go to one of these folders. It's a C drive, users, your name, update, a roaming, Blender Foundation, Blender, and simply delete the folder, right? So you see there's a config here, these add-ons. And the other one is config so you need to just purge the whole folder and reinstall everything from scratch it doesn't take much time i have a video on it as well how to do it for hard ups and box cutters so if you have you know need some help with reinstalling it from in a fresh blender and how to set everything properly then you can just you know watch my video on that i'm going to link to it and once you do that, you install Fresh Blender, you install everything from scratch, and everything should be fine. 95% of issues with hard ops, you know, like Python errors, are related to config folder. So you might want to look into that first before, you know, panicking. And next videos, they're going to be all about the workflow. So you're going to be using all these lovely functions in here that sort of change the way one works with Blender, because uh, that's all hard ops is about it's it's all about changing the way you work making you work faster more efficiently and sort of focusing more or on creating rather than you know uh, just trying to soldier through some issues or just you know trying to remember that complex way of creating some simple t you know performing some simple simple tasks so that's what it is all about more videos are coming. Um, I think I'm going to start with something very basic and then we're going to move to more advanced functions. But at the end of the course, you should be having a very good grasp and understanding of hard ups. And you'll, you'll see that this add-on, although it might just be very intimidating and kind of scary because there's this, this just a lot of functions and options, it's not really that, you know, that, that bad. So it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys, and hope you enjoyed the vid. I'll talk to you in the next one.